welcome into another episode of All Three Phases here, brought to you by West Virginia Sports Now. I am Mike Oste, and that is West Virginia football legend Rashid Marshall. You know him. We now have a logo that you see in the corner here if you're watching this video and not just listening to it, but if you're listening to it, head over to the site at WV Sports Now. You'll see the logo there. We also now are all available everywhere you can find your podcast if you just would rather listen and not look at my beautiful face and maybe Rashid's as well uh, on this video. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, etc. So we're doing well. We're improving this program now, our second edition of all three phases. The team, though, not so much. Uh, Second loss of the year, 0-2 right now as we speak, and obviously – that may change when you, you watch and listen to this one. But the loss to Kansas, for my money, this is year four, the worst loss of the Neil Brown era at this point. For what it meant, for how bad it was, for it being a home game to a lowly Kansas program. Yeah, they're better, but they shouldn't be that much better. And honestly, I was there. If that went two, three, four overtimes, if they played eight or nine quarters, I think Kansas would have kept on scoring. The defense did let the offense down, but nonetheless, the Mountaineers – Ruined kind of all the positivity after a really, really good game and a good effort in the backyard brawl within that Kansas loss. They do have Townsend in front. You have the game in Blacksburg, the Black Diamond Trophy against Virginia Tech, and then you're really getting into conference play. So, Rashid, before we get into all of that, because that's going to be maybe a downer for fans listening to the show as we're trying to maybe see where this program could head and Neil Brown trying to turn it around. How have you been? Great, man. Just uh, trying to recover from... <laughs> no one to start here, you know? Yeah. yeah. You would think that after, coming off of that pit loss, um, you would have some momentum going back home. You have yeah. Kansas coming in. And you cannot look in, overlook any team. But yeah. at the same time, it's Kansas, you know? Um, I knew Kansas would, sh- would show up, play hard, uh, give, a, give a good product, put a good product yeah. out on the field. Yeah. And um, at any point in that game, I don't think Kansas players, coaches, I don't feel like they thought they were out of it. And uh, it proved right. You know, they were able to play it out to the end and uh, leave Morgantown yeah. with a victory, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately for Mountaineer Nation. Yeah, Kansas got a victory and Jalen Daniels ran all over the field. Neil Brown did talk to us after the game on how he expected it to be a little different than facing Keaton Slovis, a lot more mobile of a quarterback. Didn't appear the defense could handle any RPOs. It just appeared like a different unit and a different team. And WU had a two-touchdown lead. The Kansas then was able to crawl back and and pick up the victory. So I got to ask you, as a West Virginia football legend, former captain of the team, all the accolades you've won in, in your career and then even being drafted in the NFL and then certainly coming back and talking to these guys. I know you were there a couple of years ago. You were at the brawl. So I, I just want to get your perspective as a former player and even putting your mindset back to when you were playing. There's no way to put lipstick on this pig. It's a bad loss. Can just may go out there and have a great season, but entering this game, you were a 13 and a half point favorite after what happened yeah. against Pitt. You, you got to win this if you want to have the special year, especially when you only have one punt and JT plays so well. So what would you be saying to this team, to this group, would you even be talking to the defense and trying to pick them up and say, hey, guys, you know, it's obvious the defense didn't play well. Dante Stills went from a sack and a half and six tackles to one overall tackle and no sacks for the unit, for for the D-line. How would you be handling this as a leader of this team to not allow this to really unravel? Because you go from there, it could get worse. ESPN's projection actually has this team. This is crazy. I don't know if you saw this on our site. I saw ESPN literally projects this team to only beat Townsend and then beat nobody else. And this is the 15th winningest program in history, 150 years of football. One in 11 will only win against Townsend. Year four, that would be the worst, arguably the worst year in program history. What would you be saying to the guys right now? Yeah. Well, just to go back, I mean, if you're looking at ESPN and you're you're kind of going off of the data, the analysis (laughs) – yeah. If you lose to Kansas, you have Blacksburg, you have Virginia Tech, you have to play them on the road, um, and the rest of your Big Twelve schedule. Yeah, you're gonna get the you're gonna get the short end of the stick. I mean, that's just how it's gonna go. But sure. um, you know, first and foremost, it's a collective effort. All these guys are in it together. 
you're not breaking this down offensively, defensively. It's a collective effort. You're a group. You're a team. The offense picks up the defense. Defense picks up the offense. And okay. right now, you have to rally together. And that's the only way you have to believe in each other. You have to go out there. You have to continue to fight. And I know this is all cliche, you know, phrases and stuff that you would say as a coach and as another player, but sure. you have to continue to believe. You have to go out and you have to continue to fight. You have to continue to work. There's a lot of football left. And, you know, two games, slow start, yes, it's, it's a bad look, but uh, you have a, a full season ahead of yourself to correct it. So um, I'm not going to say I've been in this position. I've been in some un underachieving moments <laughs> where, you know, we've right. been able to bounce back. So, you know, you just have to take it one step at a time, one game at a time, and it starts this weekend. And JT Daniels was honest. He said we made some dumb mistakes and he wasn't, you know, casting it at any individual. It's at everybody. But yeah, when you have that, that type of loss, it's how it's going to feel. Rasheed Marshall here, Mike Osti, all three phases here on WV sports now. And again, you can find us all over, all over where you can find podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, et cetera, as well as here on our YouTube channel and on our site. Now, Rasheed, I guess, first off, is it a real thing? The team's, because this is an anomaly out there. And for those who maybe haven't been in the huddle, is it a real thing that a team can completely overlook an opponent? You have a Townsend, you have a Kansas, who's maybe one of the worst power five teams the last decade. Townsend, obviously an FCS team that you should chalk up a victory immediately. But can that be a real thing that exists? And how do you prevent that from happening? Because it does really feel like going from the brawl a lot of people, even Pitt people, thought, okay, wow, West Virginia played way better than I would have thought. You take away the pick six, maybe a fourth down call, et cetera. We discussed it. Maybe that game goes the other way, and it does appear a different team showed up. Not to say they're not prepared, but, I mean, the vitriol is serious. I, I don't think there's been a time the last four or so years that the fan base is really against the program as much as they are right now. And, that, yeah. and that's a problem. If you're a player, <clears throat> if you're a coach, you're going to class with these people, you're walking around, you, you're, you're reading with the, your friends writing on Twitter and thinking, man, I thought you were my boy, but you just basically said I should get, you know, lose my scholarship. That's what's going on right now. Yeah. And you're going to hear it. And we talked about this uh, in the last yeah. taping. West Virginia is a very special place. It's a very uh, fishbowl type of community. And everything that, that happens is not going to go unnoticed. It's, it's just on a magnified level. So, yes, uh, you're going to hear the chatter. You're going to hear uh, how bad you are. But you also have your believers. Let's not get that um, misconstrued right. there. You're going to have your your uh, fan base that's, you know, just true. Just true to the heart, gold and blue, and uh, still there to, to support. But um, it's very easy to overlook an opponent. And I think one program that can – speak volumes to that is Notre Dame, not to shift the conversation yeah. here, but you know, you have an emotional game against Ohio state Marshall coming in. Uh, you think on paper, all right, we have this one in the bag and Marshall <laughs> beats you. So yes, yep. it, it is possible to happen. Fortunately enough, I've never been a part of it, but uh, it does happen. <laughs> so again, it's just getting back to square one, uh, kind of getting back to the drawing board, wiping everything clean and, and coming back, that following week trying to put your best product out there on the field to get that first victory. Yeah. Yeah. And Rasheed Marshall again here, Mike Osti, all three phases here. We're talking the state of the Mountaineer football program, and it's not really good right now, but only thing you can do is get back on the field and try to turn, turn this thing around. Cause it can, it can get worse. And you brought up an example there of Notre Dame losing to Marshall, Nebraska, losing to Georgia, Southern Texas A&M, losing these yeah. these teams are losing to fcs teams or, or, yeah. or like a, a lower level power five so it, it can happen it can get worse i do kind of want to dig a little bit deeper though in terms of this team so far and the offense put up points only the one punt maybe the running game was lesser against candace than it was against pitt you saw cj donaldson emerge against pitt no one really was able to merge against Kansas despite points being on the board. Again, the defensive line couldn't do anything. Charles Woods missed the game. He's going to miss another game. So his absence is certainly being felt. In terms of this team, what really stands out at you as not being good enough and maybe leading this program to be where it is? Because on paper, they should be better than last year. You upgrade a QB. You still have some veterans there. You lose one maybe receiver, but – Bryce Ford Wheaton has actually four touchdowns so far in the year and is stepping up with one of the better receiving seasons 
in the country, but yet obviously 0 and 2 where you are right now, it's hard to say the team is better. Yeah, so you know, let's just go back to the start of that Kansas game. In under two minutes, West Virginia already strikes on a deep ball. You get Sam James. Uh, you know, he he hit pay dirt first. Uh, you come back with another quick touchdown right after that. No one ever saw Kansas hanging 55 on West Virginia. Um, you know, I think one of the things is discipline on defense. I think that can improve. And whenever you get a team that switches schemes, the communication, there, there can be a, a, right. a lapse. There can be a loss in communication. And sometimes the defensive backs get lost. There's, there's just things that you're doing right, but you're not able to communicate it all the time on the back end. And as a quarterback, that's one of the things that I'm seeing. Um, and on the second level as well, linebackers not being able to get off blocks. So there's a lot that you can improve on, and uh, it all happens during the week. Practice, you have to get back out there and continue to work. Yeah, and I also would imagine that that matchup wasn't good, especially for a banged-up unit possibly. Again, with a mobile QB in Kansas, a lot different than what they faced against Pitt, likely a lot different than what they're going to have, even though they'll have tough places to play and a hard yep. schedule. So it could be an isolated incident with a quarterback that maybe is you know more similar to yourself. So maybe you kind of – I imagine you're probably watching it thinking, yep, he's going to feast against the defense if they're missing this, if they're missing this, they're not, they're not seeing RPOs over here, et cetera. When you watch the film, did you looking at Jalen Daniels, even from Kansas, did it appear maybe that the Mountaineer defense just wasn't built for that style? It almost is reverse Mountaineer fans, the heyday they're, they're used to Rich Rodriguez's spread and Pat white and even yourself before being able to use your legs and be an athlete yeah. in addition to the arm. That's exactly what burned them from the opponent you're exactly right and what kansas did they were very smart and this is built into their offense they gave west virginia's defense a lot to look at you saw a lot of motion across formation you saw a lot of misdirection a lot of things from the west virginia second level linebackers that's getting those guys eyes moving and before you know it you get a ride you get a pull jalen daniels up the middle scamper for 15 yards he's breaking through so those are the things where you have to be disciplined as a defense and play assignment sound football, or you're just going to get, continue to get burned. And I tell you this, this is a copycat league, and this goes for all the teams across the country. When that next team is coming up, they watch film, they see what the team did prior to, they take a look, what's in their playbook, what are they able to implement that's very similar, and they run the same exact thing. So West Virginia, until they can – slow some of this uh, quarterback run uh, RPO offense down. They're going to continue to see it. Promise you. Yeah. Yeah. And they got to get a lot of things fixed. Charles Woods will, will be missing in action yet again, but again. you figure maybe this is a time to rest somebody like that. If ever you're going to rest somebody. And it's also maybe an opponent that allows West Virginia to be getting up and, and playing really well with, with Townsend in front. But then yeah, Virginia tech is going to be really, really rough for Sheed Marshall, West Virginia football Legend, Mike Osti here. It's all three phases on WV Sports now. Now, Rashid, I'm sure you've also seen a lot of conversation after that Kansas game. And this goes even beyond Mountaineer Nation to a national conversation about Neil Brown's tenure. We did touch on it a little bit before the backyard brawl. And I know from yourself and many others told me that Neil Brown getting there it kind of brought a family atmosphere back to the program. You guys were invited back. There were different things about the past, recognizing the past a lot more than say with his predecessor. And that's all positive. And, and you said mm -hmm. and done there all the right things, but sitting there at 17 and 20 right now, after a loss in the backyard brawl, but okay, Pitt's a little bit better right now. It's not the end of the world. You are on the road. But then that loss to Kansas at home where the wheels just fell off. You blow a two touchdown lead. It looks like at halftime, not only do you not make adjustments, but the opponent does and looked way better than you in the second half and over time. And the conversation has been, you know, what do you do with Neil Brown? How much rope do you give this man? His buyout's really, really large. I don't know if you saw that number. Yep. We're looking at almost $17 million when they restructured that contract. So I think we know the program well enough. They're really going to want to not have to pay that and have a conversation. So he probably has another year at least, and the recruiting class is good coming in. But if they do go 1-11, they might just be forced to cut bait. So what are your thoughts on the Neil Brown tenure right now, the situation going on with him in this program and at this program? And then 
what kind of things do you as a former player and, and former players like yourself, when you guys are talking, I'm sure you're having private conversations, you know, want to see in a head coach for West Virginia, hypothetically, if it is not Neil Brown, I know there are yeah. some that want a quote unquote West Virginia man that, you know, how many of those are available? Obviously Jimbo and Nick, Jimbo Fisher and Nick Saban, Jimbo brought it up recently, but I don't think he's coming. Nick Saban's certainly not coming who there maybe are you getting, or maybe you just opened up the door and just, we want to find the best man for the job, which is usually where I lean. So your thoughts on Neil Brown right now, and then, yep. you know, what you want to see this program do. So first and foremost, um, you need to let this year play out. Yes. Kansas was a deflating loss. Who wants to see your program lose <laughs> to Kansas? And again, all due respect to Kansas. They came yeah. into Morgantown. They took care of business left with the W you have to tip, tip your hat to them. Um, but at the same time, what does that say about West Virginia and their program? Um, Coach Brown does give you some confidence prior to at least leading up to the season that, hey, this program is leading on the right track. We're going to kind of push this thing in the right direction. But you bring you JT, the things that, that were done in the offseason that you had to yeah. do to kind of All fix the things. Of the like you there. Created QB, and then it just hasn't led to more wins. And there's no yep. big wins still. The pieces of the puzzle were there. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's just how much patience do you have? Now, you asked the same question to uh, some of the people in the fan base. Of course, they want him out right now. <laughs> but right. you have to understand who you're kind of dealing with, you know. A, a, a fan is going to give you a, a different perspective than a person who truly understands who's been in the program and understand that, yes, this thing does take time. He's yeah. had some time, but you can't just kind of cut the rope right then and there. Um, you know, if there's a replacement coming in, I came up under Coach Rod, who's yeah. a very hard disciplinarian. And from what I understand, things have changed a lot since then. It's been a long time. Yeah. Um, you can't necessarily coach that same way and you know there's a there's a good balance between a disciplinarian a coach who's going to be hard on you who's going to push you versus the guy who's going to kind of ask versus demand you see what I mean yeah um so I think you need that guy in there who's in and listen coach brown he he does his job he's trying to do his best I know he is I watch him week to week but there has to be, there has to be some demands going on at this point, you know? Yeah. And one thing that we were always threatened with, and I don't know if that's the right word, but Hey, listen, you're going to watch the guy that I replace you with out there. Who's doing yeah. your job the way I want you to do it. And sometimes that's how it has to be. Yeah. And I know Rich Rod was definitely a, I don't want to say a tyrant, but he definitely was a hard nosed coach for yeah. sure. And I don't even believe that he coaches the same way now either. Cause it's a different yep. era of athlete. You can't really do what you did 20 years ago. Absolutely. However, and, and Neil Brown seems like he's gaining a little bit of that fire, but he did kind of come in as, as almost like your nice uncle and you appreciate the family <laughs> atmosphere, but I don't know if there was the fear of God. He did make JT earn the job, even though everybody and their brother kind of figured that it yeah, was his. Know, or, know. Yeah, I mean, like, why are you bringing him in if not? But he did make him earn the job. He wouldn't announce it until like the day before the pit game. So, I mean, he kind of tried to play tough there. I've heard him at practice in a camp. I've heard him yell at guys. I've heard him, you know, drop some curse words here. So he brings some of that. No one's going to ever bring the Rich Rod level. But do you care at all if there is – a guy that has a West Virginia connection or fits in culturally, like is a cultural fit important maybe to West Virginia more than other programs. Neil Brown's not a West Virginia guy, but he was from Kentucky. He was really cool with, with Don Nalen. He had a cultural fit and did a lot to, to bring that to, to the forefront of the program. Obviously, Rich Rod is a West Virginia guy before he eventually took that job and led the program on it on its best era but new, Bill Stewart as well. So there's been a lot of West Virginia guys or cultural fits, but maybe somebody totally from the outside. Like right now, Graham Harrell's there. He's the offensive coordinator. Yeah. He's a young guy. He's in his 30s. Some have brought him up that he could be att attractive to another program. He's doing really well offensively and has done for a while. Do you give him the keys to the Cadillac Virginia connection there? You care about a West Virginia connection as a West Virginia guy having the job. Is that important? to that program for you? Listen, I think it is because West Virginia, okay. again, it's a special place. Um, culturally, you have to understand the roots of that state. Uh, the whole coal mining, 
history, uh, the togetherness, the tight knit community, what West Virginia football means to the state. So you have to be able to understand that first and foremost. And I think I could be a little biased here playing under Rich, uh, Coach Stewart being my position coach. Um, so yeah. many guys on the staff being from the state of West Virginia, it was a much um, closer knit type family that understood the culture of West Virginia. Not saying this staff doesn't, but it does mean a lot to the fan base, the supporters, boosters, administration, you name it. So I, I would like to see if there is, you know, the time comes and hey, West Virginia has to handle some business. Get a person in there who understands the culture without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, and that's going to be something that a lot of fans are going to want. Maybe it'll depend on who is hired if they don't have that West Virginia connection. But aside from the connection, which, yeah, and maybe it's different. I mean, you were there. You played for the program. I did go to school there. I don't maybe put as much stock in the West Virginia connection, even though – but the cultural fit's important. So I think the compromise is you do want a cultural fit, even if they're not necessarily a guy that has a West Virginia connection like neil brown isn't a west virginia guy but he did appear to have a cultural fit and kind of understand the culture mm -hmm. a little bit being from kentucky talking about the coal mine industry etc again it hasn't it's a results-based business though it doesn't matter who it is you gotta, you gotta win uh, so you many games win. eventually or, or you're just gonna lose luster and lose favor um so rashid marshall here mike Osti, all three all three phases as we're talking all three phases here of this program right now the state of this program here on WV Sports Now. Now, I won't ask you to throw anybody under the bus and ask for any names here. I'm not going to ask for any names because I've got right. some DMs or texts as well. I won't throw okay. any names out there. But just in general, what's been the tenor and, and the vibe, I'd imagine, of conversations you maybe are having with former players, maybe even current players, just people that have been around the program that you, I'm, I imagine you guys talk after games and have talked this past week and talked regularly throughout a season. Just have there been anything that surprised you where maybe somebody out there who's one of them is like, no, we're done. With, I'm done with Neil Brown. I'm not going to a game until this is over. This got a fix. Like, have, has it been any different in terms of the vibe of those conversations in comparison to, you know, maybe what it was before the season? Because at that point, there were people throwing out eight plus wins. I know some of them yeah. were getting excited. There were others going a different direction. But what's what's the what's the vibe? around the, the, the group text of former players. So as West Virginia was going into overtime, yeah. I got a text on my phone. Okay. And it was a former player, not going to name a name. Okay. He said, the end is here. Okay. And that's all the text said. There's a lot of people, listen, again, and I hate to repeat the same thing over and over. I know. We're beating yeah. a dead horse here. Yeah. Morgantown was a place where you come in, it's a night game. There's this mystique, there's this magic, there's yeah. this, there's this just something in the air that that gives West Virginia an advantage. A yeah, a, a that would be one of those night games. Yeah, under Rich Rod, advantage. knocked out the night games. Yeah, and you lose to Kansas. That's deflating, you know. So yeah, people, uh, it is what it is. We've said it. You lost to Kansas at home. It's hard to bounce back from that. And then you hear the reports just as, a, as one of the average fans, and they're like, okay, we're getting uh, one win for the rest of the season. What do we have to look forward to? Now, personally, I do think West Virginia will bounce back. We'll come back. We'll beat TCU. There's going to be some wins in there where people don't expect it. Um, but if Kansas hung 55 on you, you also have a lot of, <laughs> you just you have a lot yeah. of things to correct. Um, right. So, yeah, there's, there's definitely some, some – disgruntled former players, um, a lot of supporters that I know of that I'm in contact with that, okay. you know, were able to uh, express their, their, uh, how you want to word this, their discomfort with the program. Yeah. And the direction <laughs> it's going, you know? Right. So. Yeah. I, I, I've been hearing it too. Um, yeah. I, I'm not surprised at all. As a former player that's so recognizable and, and around the area, you certainly can drive to Morgantown. You're not far. You were at the backyard brawl. I saw you there in the press box. And, and certainly your career at West Virginia is right up there with anybody else. How much – I don't want to say say so, because obviously the program is going to do whatever they, they want to do. 
but have you ever over the years been asked your opinion about a hire or about anything like that, whether it be from the program or anybody close to the program or after a decision was made, they called you and said, hey, what do you think about this? Or do you want to come out here and meet this guy, Neil Brown, Dana, whoever it is? Like if we're moving in a direction where we might have to have a new era of WU football, if it doesn't go a certain way at the end of the year, are any of you former players involved in any of that in terms of even just giving your opinion, even if obviously they're going to do what they want to do? Do you offer it, whether it's solicited or not? And, uh, you know, how does that go? No, that's actually actually a very good question. I think there's only been one player in the history of the program to influence a hire, and I think that was Pat. With yeah, Coach on Bill Stewart, um, Bill Stewart yeah, correct, yeah. Correct. He said on um, stage after winning, that's pretty hard to deny. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I say influence because I don't know if that, you know, gave Coach Stewart the actual right. stamp of approval or not. But uh, I will say that that was heavily influenced by Pat. Yeah. But uh, aside from that, I don't think administration is reaching out to any guys. Now, if they were to reach out, I would definitely give my opinion on where I think it needs to go okay. in the direction in terms of uh, a new coach characteristics, qualities, things like that. But for the most part, I think that is all in-house. You know, there's, there's a team of people who handle things like that. But um, listen, I, I think that's a great point because if you talk to players who have been successful and you collectively get their opinion and things that get those teams to the, to the top, then, you know, you might be able to put something together that way as well. Yeah, especially because some of them are just offering the opinion whether you want to hear the opinion or not. Like Pac-Man Jones yeah. is out there throwing opinions, uh, you know, uh, on the dartboard. So you're going to hear some of these opinions regardless. But yeah, again, it just I just was interested. Maybe the casual fan also or the common fan would love to hear that. If you guys get in that conversation in any way, I'm sure you're having it amongst yourself, though. I'm sure you're having it amongst yourself. And I, I cannot imagine what, what that group text was like during that Kansas game. Even going in, and I even said to who I was sitting next to in the press box, like, look, this obviously isn't really, really isn't good at all. But if somehow this team can get out of here with a victory, it'll dissipate a little bit. It'll be bad, but it won't it won't be as much vitriol and fire. But to then go yeah. ahead and lose, and part of the 55 is that pick six, but still it was it was really, really, really bad. Obviously, the vibe isn't good. And then you'll have some big games. You can turn this around. You can get some staple wins. But obviously, then people will say, well, if you could beat TCU, if you could beat Virginia Tech, how are you going to have problems with Kansas? Will remain to be seen what Kansas is like, though. I mean, nobody expected the Orange Bowl year or 2008 from Kansas, and it did happen. Yeah. Yeah. They could end up having a special year with a veteran QB. I'm not putting my money on it. It's probably a bad day for West Virginia at the office. But we will see. Rashid, do you have anything else that you want to make sure the uh, the, the listener or viewer is aware of here? Any, yeah, any final wanna, tidbits listen, or last words? It's here? very important. It is very important to take this thing week by week. Yes, mm-hmm. we are on to no one ever saw this coming. <laughs> you know, if, if you ask 100% of the fan base, we should be 2-0 and right now. This thing can be turned At least 1-1. One and one. At least 1-1. At, one one. at least. At least 1-1. <laughs> one one. But – you know, after a layoff from the backyard brawl, you get that back. You want to yeah. be two and zero uh, at the end of the day. But um, it's a lot of season left. There's a lot of football to be played. Um, don't look ahead. It's it's one week at a time, and you know, support these young guys. I've I've been there again, not to this degree, but I've been there. And uh, so it's important if you want to continue to see uh, some fight in these players as a yeah. fan base. You have to continue to rally behind these guys because. Unfortunately, they hear it. They hear the chatter. They read the message boards, whatever it is. So, um, listen, it's, it's, it's a dark state right now, but we can come out of it for sure. Yeah, and that got to be the message. And I will say, because uh, I've been critical of the Neil Brown tenure as well, and even certainly right now, but Neil Brown and what he's said – Uh, and kind of going in your direction there, but also that we got to just, you know, stay tunnel vision, look at each game. We got to fight here. All that he's saying all the right things. And he's, he's, he has the right attitude and the team does as well. And you hear them. It doesn't feel like they're going to lay down for anybody or quit on the year. It it might be isolated incidents of a really, really tough place to play at Pittsburgh with the fan base. Like it was, I don't think I've seen a pit crowd like that ever. At, yeah. at Heinz Field or Akershore Stadium. So that's what it was like. And then you lose to a team that was ranked at the time or is ranked. And then obviously Kansas is just not a good game to be losing. But 
hey, maybe it was a mobile QB that you're not going to see as much of the rest of the season. Who knows? So all the right things are being said. We'll see how many buttons that are being pushed are the right ones as well. And I also put it out there in WB Sports now and what you need to see this team do against Townsend. Because just at this point, just winning against some of these programs isn't good enough. You really got to do certain things and, and show up and show out, especially in, against those type of programs. But then, yeah, in Blacksburg, that's going to be another night game. That's another night game yep. on the road. Imagine that place to play. Oh, it's um, going to be absolutely nuts. Yeah, yeah. And actually, before we go, because I can actually ask you that, what is that like? Like for players like JT Daniels never has quarterbacked the game dealing with the Black Diamond Trophy rivalry. He dealt with the backyard brawl, and obviously that was a rocking house. They hadn't played it in 10 years. West Virginia did beat Virginia Tech in Morgantown last year. But whew, what is that atmosphere like in Blacksburg? Yeah. And then do you have any wild stories of your time going to Blacksburg oh, or that rivalry with Virginia Tech at all? Because that was the height getting into the Michael Vick time, then his brother, the Marcus Vick. That was the height of that rivalry, really, which became a rivalry then. Obviously, the backyard brawl existed a century earlier, but that yep. was when the rivalry with Virginia Tech got life. So imagine Morgantown, West Virginia. All right. We're at uh, Milan Fishcarf Stadium. Yeah. You had about uh, ten to 15,000 more fans in. Um, the stands, all right they're kind of packed in. So it's, it's almost a straight up and down architect type of stadium. The noise yeah. gets trapped in the full week. We had to basically pump sound into, into okay. the stadium. We went up into the indoor building and it is that loud. And that didn't even replicate what we dealt with on that Wednesday night. When we went down there and there is a difference between night and day kickoff, you know, nighttime. Yeah. Think of Morgantown. Once again, you're out tailgating all day all night you're drinking and it's kickoff much more rowdy um so yeah you're, you're gonna get a hostile crowd it's gonna be loud it's gonna and when i tell you you cannot hear the person beside you it is that loud so you have to make sure that your communication is wrapped tight you have to make sure um your offensive lineman is able to communicate you have yeah. to be able to signal things because you're, you're not going to be able to hear a thing um and yeah, aside from that, you try to push the crowd out and, and just handle your business. But it's going to be a very, very tough place to play. Um, one thing that will help West Virginia out, we were able to take the crowd out very early. You know, we got up on the board, um, kind of leveled them out, mellowed them a little bit. And from there, we were able to kind of take their business. But um, yeah, I think it's the same, same recipe that you would take coming into Morgantown, try to get the crowd of it out of it, suck the air out, and uh, from there, take care of business. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, to say the least, obviously, yeah. And and I don't know if there's also the venom around the rivalry that existed when you were part of it, and certainly when Pat White was a part of it. I mean, I, that, was, that was a crazy rivalry at that point, on what you would see in the stands, what people would say, what type of signs are out there. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's calmed now um certainly from from last year so what any player is going to experience in the game in blacksburg is probably not half of really what you experienced um but it's yeah it's gonna, it's gonna to be wild prepare for it until you yeah. get there i mean yeah. just bottom line that's what it is the the noise factor the the crowd being so hostile and i tell you the the sidelines are right here to stand you can feels like you can just reach over and you know give a fan a high five if you wanted to is that close uh, literally on top of you. So, again, that's that's something that they have to prepare for. Coach Brown is going to have to do his best to to yeah. mentally get those guys locked in. But um, before all of that, you have Townsend coming in, and you have to take right. care of business, who has a ton of transfers from the FBS level. So uh, this is not a game that you want to overlook. Yeah, and it's a Townsend team that was four and seven last year, but it's a different Townsend team than last year. As you mentioned, a lot of transfers there, and, and again. Uh, Texas A&M, Nebraska, Notre Dame. I mean, it, it can happen. It can it happen happens. to you. We, and we, if we it's going it. to ever happen in West Virginia, this feels like this is the vulnerable time where it could happen. And if you want venom amongst your friends and on social media, you lose that one. We're having a different conversation. 
So yeah. you, 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 you got to make sure you take care of business. And then obviously the Virginia, and I don't think Virginia tech is really that good. I think they've been overrated of a team and they pretty much have been for the last five plus years, but it's hard for West Virginia to say that right now with where the program is. So that's going to be rough. And then you get into conference play. It won't be easy. We'll be back here at some point coming up in, in those coming weeks uh, yep. as West Virginia probably gets through the, those next couple tracks and, and maybe after, that black diamond trophy is awarded right now. West Virginia is the proud owner of that trophy winning the game in Morgantown last year. We'll see what happens. I honestly had that game penciled as a loss and that was before the 0 and 2 start. So now it's almost a borderline must win. You really got to stack some W's now. You do. And it's, you certainly, do. it's certainly not going to be easy. You know, I think the most important thing right now uh, for coach Brown, you don't want to lose this team. Uh, you have a ton of seniors who yeah. they want to go out the right way. If you can keep the glue, if you can keep this team gelled, at least you still have a shot. Once you get guys going this way, you get guys going that way, you get guys chattering in the locker mm-hmm. room about, you know, um, just just disgruntled players. That's never a good thing. So it's going to be very important for him to be able to keep this team gelled together, keep the camaraderie, uh, keep these guys ready and able to buy in. And, uh, yeah, you just you just take it from there. So. Um, that's that's going to be his biggest challenge moving forward. Yeah, and again, it will not be easy. As again, I I can't remember really a time when the program's been been this down really, and that that that's it's been a while. So there's a there's a lot of work ahead, but there's still a long season ahead. So ESPN projections aren't factual games got to actually play them play all three all three phases and then we'll see what happens so that'll do it for this edition of the show again all three phases you can find us all over where podcasts can be heard at apple stitcher spotify etc tune in also of course here on wb sports now on our site and on our youtube channel that's rasheed marshall west virginia football legend and He's never had the program as down as this right now, as he mentioned earlier. So he hasn't been through this, but he certainly can provide you some lessons on, on how to handle it and to conquer some adversity, to say the very, very least. I'm Mike Oste, and that'll do it for this edition of All Three Phases here, presented by West Virginia Sports Now.